Hey guys, welcome to my new tutorial, and I know what you're all probably thinking, you're all just like, ah, it's another basic tutorial. Because I've been getting a ton of comments left about uh, stop making basic tutorials and make advanced ones, and that's exactly what I'm going to do. And um, the reason I'm making this one is because I know a lot of my subscribers don't know how to use After Effects. I've made videos like this in the past, but I know a lot more about After Effects now so this video should be a lot better. Things I'll be moving on to making tutorials of is effects that you see in um, Sparkles Productions videos by Viper and everything like that so the 3D text sticking to the walls, the planes flying over the maps, the um, hologram and HUD things that stick above people's heads when they run or stick to the walls and pretty much things like that. I'll move on to all of that within the next week or so. I'm not a big fan of that editing style but I know a lot of people are so you know, might as well make them. Okay, so I'm going to be using After Effects CS5, and this tutorial is going to be super, super basic. So if you already use After Effects, just click out of it now. This is for people who just downloaded it or are thinking of downloading it, just so you can follow along with my tutorials, and I don't need to explain everything in every little detail in them. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is create a new composition. So go Composition, New Composition. Okay, so this uh, composition settings box will pop up, we want to name every single composition we create and this way when we get into uh, bigger projects with multiple compositions everything's just a lot more organized so we'll just call this um, YouTube tutorial or whatever or say if you're making an intro for someone you can call it Infused Media Intro things like that okay so with um, your resolution you can use presets here for frame rate and resolution and everything like that but I just normally do it all manually. 90% of the time I use 1280 by 720 which is 720p, it's HD, um, no black bars on YouTube, or if people request it, or say if I'm editing a video that I filmed in 1080p, I'll bump it up to 1920 by 1080. So yeah, I'm just gonna leave it at 1280 by 720 for now. You want to make sure your pixel aspect ratio is square pixels, so when you create a square, it is actually square and it doesn't turn out looking like a rectangle. Um, your frame rate, 29.97, is what I usually use. You want to make sure your resolution is full and 15 seconds for my duration. You can make it as long as you want. So now that we do that, um, we've got our composition here, we've got our timeline, and we've got all our layers, which will pop up here. So the first thing we need to do is make a new background. So to do this, to make anything, you need to click in your composition window here. Um, so you can see it's like slightly outlined. Then we want to go layer, new, solid. And then we want to pretty much name all our solids again, just to keep things organized, because organization saves a lot of time when you move on to bigger things. So we'll just call this one background. Then we want to click the make comp size switch which will make it the same dimensions and same length as your composition. So then we click OK and you can see it worked. We've got a nice white background which is looking pretty fine. Then what we need to do is we can apply an effect to it to make say a gradient and the effect is called ramp. So we can either click on our layer and go effect generate ramp or we can just type ramp into the effects and presets search and drag it in. Um, whichever way you think's quicker, which I use the search option. Okay, so pretty much what a ramp is is a gradient. Yeah, um, you can change the colors, or you can change the type from linear to radial. And I normally use radial. You can drag the top point in, which you can see this little circle here. You can drag that in to the center, and then drag the bottom one out to fade it out nice and gradually like that. Then you can go ahead and change the colors to, you know, the silver and gray that I usually use on my intros and everything like that. And um, it's just that nice, professional looking, simple background. Or you can make it a light blue and a dark blue to make a colorful one. It's up to you. Okay, so now I'll quickly show you how to add some text. So we get the text tool, which is up here, or you can go lay a new text. I go lay a new. Um, I just use this way. I don't know why you would use the other way. But anyway, so once you click anywhere in your composition, it so once you click anywhere in your composition, it turns into the same text editor that's in any other program you use, so Photoshop or um, anything like that. And we can go ahead and type our text. Uh, if you want to center your text, a little tip: you can go down to your guide and grid options here, 
click and hold and click title action safe or you can click the inverted comma key on your keyboard and that way you can just perfectly center it you know scale down your text and then we've got all of our character options over on the right here where our effects and presets tab was um, so here you can change the font I'm using Coolvetica at the moment because I know someone's going to ask the question and there you go um, so we've got our make sure your text is selected sorry we've got our character size slider um, our character spacing so you can make them pretty much overlap slightly or you can spread them out um, we've got our stroke width there and if you don't want a stroke or if you want a stroke you can see our primary color is here which is our fill color you can change that to whatever you want and then behind it there's this outlined box which is our stroke color so you can um, change it to any color you want or oh, you can click that little box with the line through it to turn it off you can also do that with um, the fill box you can turn that off as well to make it only a stroke but yeah um, that's pretty much it. We've got the basic controls like bold, italics, force caps, um, small caps, everything like that. Um, so yeah, you can play around with those, make your text look a bit different than it usually would. And yeah, and you can see there's four options on the left here, and then there's about eight on the right. Um, or eight boxes, or whatever. So I'll quickly go over them. Um, on the very left, we've got the pretty much visible switch so you can hide the layer make it visible um, we've got the audio switch so that mutes the audio for that layer if you've got audio on it uh, we've got the solo switch which hides every other layer except for that one we've got the lock switch which if you put that on a layer you can't change any of the options on a layer so you can't accidentally select it you can't accidentally delete it you can't select it or move it in your composition window so that's pretty useful so say if you're editing your text and you accidentally keep clicking your background or you're fully finished with a layer you can just lock it so you can't do anything more with it and you don't accidentally screw anything up okay um... now moving on to the right hand side we've got the shy switch which is actually really useful and i've only started using it lately so say if we've got like i'll just duplicate the background to help illustrate my point here Okay, so say if all of these layers are different holograms or particles or solids or backgrounds and we're fully finished editing them, we don't need to do anything more with them at the moment, but they're just taking up a hell of a lot of room in our layers and they're getting in the way and it's getting annoying. What you can do is um, select the layers you want by, uh, say if you want to select all of these, you just click the top one, hold shift and click the bottom, or you can hold control and click individual ones. Um, and then you click the little shy switch here, which looks like the little guy peeking over a wall or something and you'll see him duck down and nothing's changed yet but then if we click it for the composition which is this bigger one up here you can see all of those layers disappear now the layers are still active in the composition the animations that you've set on them will still happen and they're not visible or hidden they have just removed the uh, layers in your layer window to pretty much take up less room get them out of the way make it so you can't accidentally select them in the layer window you can still select them in the composition window and I think it's really useful for when you're doing bigger projects you know just gets them all out of the way so we'll um, delete all those layers turn that back on okay the next one is pretty much um, I'm not really sure what that does I've never used it so I'm not gonna try and make something up to pretend I do the next one is the quality switch so say if um, your text has a lot of effects on it it's taking a while to render you can just um, turn down the quality just for your text layer so it looks a bit dodgier but it's going to speed up your rendering process and then when you're done with um, adding all the effects and you're ready to do the final render you can um, change it back to perfect quality so it doesn't look dodgy when you've actually finished the next one is the effects switch and you can either turn it off just here and it hides all the effects on that layer or you can just click it up here if you go into your back to where you change the ramp properties you can turn it off there as well the next one is frame blending so say if you're filming your footage and you want to slow it down a bit but you're slowing it down to a point where it's starting to look laggy you can click frame blending and after effects will try and create artificial frames between the two to try and smooth out your clip kinda what Twixter does and you know it's really helpful it looks pretty decent doesn't always look perfect but you know it's kinda good 
Um, the next one is motion blur. So what motion blur does is if we turn it on for that individual layer, we also need to turn it on for the composition up here. Um, and what that does is when you animate something, it'll add fake motion blur in. And I use motion blur for any single animation I'd ever do. Um, it just helps smooth it out a bit, makes it look like it's actually realistic. If you don't do motion blur, it looks really weird, and it just looks like you're moving something like that. If you use motion blur, it just makes everything look nicer. So I always use that. Next one is adjustment layers, which I won't get into. Uh, and then finally, the 3D switch. Now, you can see once you do that, if you press P on your keyboard to bring up position, or R, you can see it's added um, pretty much the third dimension. <laughs> um, you can move it in Z space using the sliders like this, so you can move it behind the camera or move it further back into Z space. Um, you can rotate it in Z space like this, you know, create some cool rotations or whatever. Um, and that's pretty much it. I'll get more in depth at that later. And that's pretty much it. So I'll quickly show you how to save it. So say if you're done, you're completely happy. It's looking awesome. You can go File, Save As. Again, you want to name it appropriately, so YouTube Tutorial, just so you know what you're doing. Then we want to, say, render it out. So Composition, Make Movie. You want to make sure this is set to Best Settings, so Best, Full. Um, that's pretty much it for that. Then we want to go to the output module. You want to make sure you've selected your right format. I normally use AVI and then use XVID to compress it, which I won't show you. You can just look up a rendering tutorial. Or you can use um, a JPEG sequence or QuickTime or something like that. If you have audio, you want to make sure your audio output is selected. Otherwise, you won't hear any of your audio. And then output too, if you click that, um, you can pretty much save it. Click save, click render, and you'll see it renders out. When it's done, it'll make a funky little noise, and you're finished. Okay, so that's pretty much it for the tutorial. I know it didn't help anyone. If it did, be sure to hit that like button. As I said, it was for basic people. Thanks for watching. Um, a quick message. Thanks for getting me to 10,000 subscribers and over a million video views. Um, really appreciate everyone who comments and everything like that. So everyone keep doing that. If you're not subscribed, click that subscribe button, it'll make me happy, leave me a comment, and suggest more tutorials, so yeah, thanks guys for watching, and I'll see you later.